We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. All right, everybody, welcome back for another one. And I wanted to start this video off with the Emperor Klaus Schwab calling for the cyber pandemic. And uh, I think we're starting to see signs of one developing, right? Found it very interesting, some of the things that have occurred this week. Uh, but first and foremost, want to give credit to Rewire Deprogramming. This guy makes videos about predictive programming in the media and um, different cartoons and so on. So go ahead and give him a watch if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Didn't want to snag his video without giving credit. So there you have it. Um, but hey, for those of you that don't know, who is this Klaus Schwab guy calling for the cyber pandemic? Well, Klaus Schwab is the founder of the World Economic Forum and executive chairman as well. Found that very interesting. The same World Economic Forum that is calling for this great reset. And on this great reset, they have harnessing the fourth industrial revolution. But what falls under that? First bullet point, internet governance. Hmm, interesting. The world of stage, digital economy and new value creation, AI. Future of media and entertainment, hmm. Could that be changes to social media coming? 5G, drones, digital identity, hmm, that one sticks out there. Quantum computing, digital transformation of business. Oh, blockchain, there we have it. The same World Economic Forum that selected Elastos to this global innovators community. Elastos, which is the only, I repeat, the only crypto project out there that has gotten anywhere close to actually reconstructing the internet infrastructure. What they have built cannot be re replicated in crypto. It cannot. It has 20 years of effort put into it. Blockchain was just a missing component that will now allow them to build out a platform, which they are building, that has digital identity. Right? What do we see there? Digital identity. Right? It also has an internet governance layer called the Cyber Republic, right? And of course, it's using blockchain. It's gonna help with the digital transformation of businesses and a digital economy and new value creation. Oh, very interesting, huh? Seems like it's all starting to come to the surface. Before I move on, though, I wanted to point out that somebody um, kind enough in the comments to point out that Quantstamp, is also part of this global innovators community. I had originally said I only found Elastos, Ethereum with consensus, Hedera Hashgraph, and then obviously Ripple and Stellar have been in there as well. But as far as global innovators community, I had left out Quantstamp, so there you have it. They are also part of this. So another interesting project to maybe consider looking into, All right? But what's the theme, right? Why am I even talking about this? So if you don't know, just over the weekend, the US Treasury Department was hacked. And then on Monday, all of the Google services were down for a while, including YouTube, Google Drive, and others. I think we have it right here. YouTube Drive and multiple Google services appear to be down across the globe, right? So you get it. Point being, uh, you know, Klaus Schwab talks about a cyber pandemic in a world where Basically, the entire grid, power grid, is cut off. So you lose transportation and so on. Well, I don't think that what happened over the weekend was that severe, right? But what I think it does is build the narrative. It builds this predictive programming that rewire deprogramming talks about, all right? And if you don't believe in predictive programming, well, here. Let me show you yet another clip. This one from two years ago. 
point here is I, I actually think the earlier guest was a bit of an optimist by saying that this is the one remaining threat. It's not the one. We've got North Korea. We've got Iran. We've got a, a nuke that could go. And cybersecurity is big. But we have to, I think, look at the fundamentals underlying the economy and where we are. And, you know, it's been a long time since we had a recession. Something rather unexpected over the next few years will likely trigger another one. Investors shouldn't be surprised, but we will be. Yeah. But, but going back to the element of fear, Lizanne, I mean, when you think about a cyber attack on the financial systems, I mean, think about that J.P. Morgan note, the great liquidity crisis, highlighting the fact that there are so many electronic trading desks, that there are so many products, um, so many assets in, in passive vehicles, and that when volatility spikes, there could be an absence of liquidity. Multiply that by the impact a cyber attack could have on a party with the rest of the market still trading, and we could see a flash crash times 10, I would think. So two years ago, more than two years ago at this point, CNBC's talking about a cyber attack that would disrupt the financial system and maybe cause a flash crash of 10 times the scale. Whatever that means, mainstream nar uh, media narrative has been building this idea of a cyber attack. Then coming, now you got Klaus Schwab calling for it as well. Um, so I don't think we've seen the end of this. I just think we're starting to see the signs of something more dramatic coming, right? What's interesting though about this is, uh, so first and foremost, for SolarWinds, which is the, um, the Google, uh, basically power services or whatever. They have more than 425 of the US Fortune 500 as their customers. They have the all five branches of the military, the Pentagon, NASA, Postal Service, offices, offices of the president of the US. I mean, come on, it's all in there, right? All five of the top US accounting firms. And then going down the list, you can see there a bunch of main companies and universities and cities that we've all heard of, right? But another thing that's interesting about this, if you try to search for this on your own, you know, SolarWinds customers, okay, come to SolarWinds, click this link, oh, page not found. What happened there? Well, I thought that was weird at first, so I Googled it a little more, and look what I found. So. They actually chose to hide the list of high profile customers after the devastating attack. Well, you're hiding the list, but handy dandy Twitter still has it out there because we have people like at OSX Reverser. Go ahead and give him a follow if you have interest in a label himself. A cyber psychopath who loves to torture binaries for pleasure and money. Knows a thing or two about economics and loves 911's manual, no PDK or turbo crap. Okay. <laughs> I just thought his description was. But yeah, he shared this list and then it immediately got taken down by SolarWind, right? But as you can see, I think that they are setting the stage for something more dramatic when it comes to cyber attacks. It's something worth paying attention to, right? Once again, not trying to be doom and gloom, but I think there's a little more to the story uh, than what we're seeing. You guys, at this point, you cannot believe in all these things just being coincidences for the year. Can you really, can you really ask yourself, oh, well, that just happened, all right? And then also with the election, what happened there, right? Lots of drama there saying that there's a fraud on either side, okay? Well, this is just typical problem, reaction, solution. Oh, there's a problem with our voting system. Cool, let's use the blockchain one. Our internet's bad, it can always be hacked. All right, cool, let's use another one. Our financial system is vulnerable to hacks and uh, money doesn't move efficiently around the world. We have a liquidity issue, as mentioned in the CNBC video. Well, we got a solution for that as well. And at last, this is so very hard to understand. Uh, you guys need to really dig into this project, but it has so many different uh, protection layers, essentially, for this new internet infrastructure. And that's why I say that there's no project in crypto that is as close to actually building a new internet as Elastos. They have put years and years of work into this, millions of lines of code, uh, and there's 
multiple layers, as I said, merge mining with Bitcoin. They got the uh, Elasso's carriers, a peer-to-peer -peer network. They have the runtime. So briefly describing the two, Elasto's runtime operating system is a lightweight operating system which runs on a mobile device or PC to prevent apps from directly accessing the internet. So the way it works is uh, basically you download this operating system onto your phone and when you're using it, none of the apps on there can actually access your device. So it provides a security layer um, allowing your device to be protected from apps on the internet. Simply put, Elasto's peer-to-peer -peer network, the Elasto's carrier, is a completely decentralized peer-to-peer -peer platform that conveys info for apps by taking over all network traffic between virtual machines. And correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, um, this Elasto's carrier can be implemented into almost any device. I believe they have put uh, TVs out there, they have nodes that you can buy for your home, um, speakers even. So almost any device in the future, the way this is going to work is these devices will be scattered around all over the world with the Elasso's carrier on them. And so basically every single device acts as a node. So you would need to hack literally every single device to be able to attack the network in some way, right? All right. Lots of evidence coming to surface about which direction we're heading. And yet another thing, see, this is how things are going to continue to unfold, right? So Pornhub takes down all content uploaded by unverified users. So the way I see the future is everyone is going to have that digital ID that they're going to need to access any website, to upload to any website, to do anything, probably to interact with the financial system at all. Right? Sounds very controlled, right? But this is how you prevent the internet from being hacked and also make money transparent. So if everyone's KYC or has their digital identity tied to their private crypto wallets, um, then they'll be able to interact with all these blockchains, right? Send money all around the world and they'll be able to see exactly where you send it. So the irony of blockchain was that you were going to have some anonymous for the money or for the people money. Um, but I think the end result is going to be uh, more control. Right? You're going to have people who cannot even interact with the financial system or the internet without verifying their ID to do so. All right, that's how I see things unfolding. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to be good or bad. I'm just saying that I believe that that is what is. All right, so I suggest you definitely do some research, look into Elastos, you know, do what you can find out on your own. All right, hope that was an interesting one. As always, please like and subscribe, share with your friends and family, and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. What is a cashless society? What does it actually mean in a literal or high level sense? Money will become like these, relics of a different age. And will only be found in places like this. In other words, hard cash will disappear. It will become electronic, transferred by things like these. Then Tracy is in Beijing to show us what a nearly cashless society actually looks like. Ben, good morning. Mobile payment transactions in China reached a cumulative total of 277.4 trillion RMB in 2018, ranking number one in the world, according to the recently released statistical report on internet development in China. As of June 2019, online payment users in the country reached 633 million. The cashless society is now approaching. When's the last time you paid with cash? Well, chances are cash has taken a backseat to the plastic in your wallet and smartphone pay apps. Denver 7's Ryan Luby explains the digital pay revolution and why not everyone is on board. The cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society. The cashless society is now approaching. The cashless society.